In the 2022 budget, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman introduced crypto taxes and announced a 30% plus applicable surcharge and a 4% cess on the profits made by trading cryptocurrencies on or after April 1st, 2022. So if you are wondering how India's crypto tax works and how the income tax department views investments or trading in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, we have covered everything you need to know about crypto taxation in India in our special show, Tax Wars, which will be your tax guide for 2022 and beyond. So let me introduce you to our special guest, Mr. Indy Sarkar, founder of TaxCrypt Technologies. Indy sir, welcome on 3.0 TV. Thank you very much, Manoj, and Namaskar to your audience. Thank you so much, sir. In this first show about taxation, what we have uh, what we have done is, the initiative which 3.0 TV has taken is to simplify the crypto taxes for our viewers. So what are your opening remarks, if you can just begin with, sir? First of all, from the time we've had the crypto tax announcement, which was an explicit policy decision, which you February 2022, um, I think all crypto investors need to be fully aware of the fact that crypto taxation is real. And therefore, to the extent to which they need to be tax compliant in their crypto trading activities uh, is an important uh, part of their obligation uh, if they're a resident of India and operating out of India. So right, um, the opening remark is that tax compliance is a reality that everybody should worry about it if you're trading crypto assets. All right, since we're talking about uh, about taxation on the Web3 universe, so my first question to you is, are crypto to crypto transactions taxable in India or it is just on the withdrawals of crypto to INR which is taxable, sir? If you can just simplify this. Absolutely. I will say that the wrong thing uh, amongst a lot of investors that jab tak uh, mein crypto account se fiat currency, in other words, Indian rupees mein mein nahi nikalta hon from my wallet, my taxes, uh, incidence is, is, is not arising. Uh, ye bhoat badi galat fahmi hai. Okay. Any crypto transaction is a taxable event. Okay. If, you, if I can just spend 30 seconds, yeah, agar aap bitcoin se ethereum mein transfer karte hai, in other words, that is a transaction which involves a sale of a Bitcoin and purchase of an Ethereum. Which of Bitcoin ka jo apne sale kara hai, uspe aapka tax incidence banta hai if there is a profit. Uh, and there is a whole formula around cost basis and FIFO uh, that would apply uh, to calculating your tax incidence at that point. All right. Since we are talking about, uh, about you know, cryptocurrencies and its universe, so do cryptocurrency traders, investors need to pay the new 30% taxes for all their tax liabilities, even, even prior to April 2022? Um, this is a great question. And I think in many instances, uh, a lot of people, um, kafi crypto investors ne 30% rule ke hisab se 31st March 2022 ke tax filings kare hai. Um, I believe in many instances, they have overpaid their tax liability. All right. Because the ruling came in from 1st of April. And prior to that, one could have applied normal financial assets rules in terms of short term, long term capital gains, uh, and therefore had the benefit of offsetting losses to some extent also. Oh, is that so? I mean, we are talking about trading activities such as airdrops. Maybe some of the other airdrops were, were due in March, which were done in April. So, how does this thing, you know, can be managed? Airdrops ka, airdrops ka jo taxation scenario hai, that has pretty much not changed from pre 1st April 2022 and post 1st April. All right, okay. Uh, airdrop, if I have to put it in very simple terms, uh, aapke dashako ke liye, airdrop is, um, dashako ko ye dekhna chahi ki airdrop ek gift ke barabar hai. Okay. So, jaise aapko gift tax, Lakti hai and there is a certain tax rule where you are exempt. Um, I believe it's up to 50,000 rupees. And if you have any gifting that is beyond 50,000, the entire amount okay. that you've captured as gift is taxed at your marginal tax rate. So, usme pre and post 1st April 22 mein koi farak nahi hai. All right. So, since we are trying to understand how this tax structure works for our viewers. So, my next question to you is, sir. 
If a person converts one crypto to another without moving them into their account, so are they liable to pay taxes? पहली बात तो when you are converting, it is always happening wallet to wallet. Exactly. Uh, so there is action or other activity that is taking place within your crop crypto wallet domain, um, and therefore that is seen as selling one particular crypto asset and buying another crypto asset. So by definition, it is your trading activity and therefore a liable for a tax uh, claim um, as per the rules as they are lined up. Now, the only area where you don't have tax incidents, you have two wallets. You have transferred a Bitcoin from one wallet to the other wallet, you have transferred it merely as a Bitcoin. Uspe aapka koi tax incidents nahi banta hai because you've maintained your position rather than exited one cryptocurrency and purchased another one. Sir, but my, my follow up question on that is say, for example, if, if someone has purchased Bitcoin at roughly around 19,000 and right. currently the price is 19,500 and he has sold. So, sir, wo pata kaise chalega ki usne 19,000 mein liya hua hai? Wo, that's a great question. Kyuki जहां से भी आपने लिया होगा आपका एक कॉस्ट इंसिडेंस कॉस्ट बेसिस कैलकुलेशन होता है एज पार्ट ऑफ योर वॉलेट सो ऑल योर वॉलेट्स हैज दैट बिकॉज एट द एंड ऑफ द डे दिस इज ऑल ऑन अ ब्लॉकचेन एंड देयरफॉर एनीथिंग दैट्स गोइंग इन एंड आउट ऑफ द वॉलेट वेदर कन्वर्जन फ्रॉम फियाट टू अ क्रिप्टो करेंसी व्हिच इज योर परचेस इन उसका एक कॉस्ट बेसिस एस्टैब्लिश हो जाता है so, sir, what you have told me is that cost based established. We are just trying to understand you know, how this thing works. So, while filing tax returns, so are you going to give the entire blockchain series to the tax guys or how does this thing work, sir? So, actually, what you have to do is at the end of the day, the complication is for crypto investors. This is very important. The complication is that when you are purchasing, or rather, when you are booking a trade, it's a transaction. And therefore, there is a cost basis of acquisition. Perfect. Fantastic. Dusra cheez jab bech rahe hai, FIFO rules will apply. That is what calculates the weighted average cost of what you're selling. All right, sir. In order to calculate your gains. Perfect. Perfect. So, moving on, if a person has multiple wallets, say for example, he's having two uh, or maybe more than that and a lot of transactions within them. How will these transactions will be calculated? It's my next question to you, sir. Uh, this is also really important to know that under India tax regulation, FIFO rule applies on a wallet basis. US may, and some of these international tax platforms, they apply FIFO rule on an aggregated basis. In other words, if you have three wallets hai, and there is transactions happening across these three wallets, FIFO cost basis estimate or computation, they would do on an aggregate basis. India does not allow that. So therefore, be very careful. Aapko wallet basis FIFO calculate karke, uspe tax incidents calculate karna padega. All right, ye toh bauti achi information sir aapne diye, but uh, but agar isse agar hatke agar hum kuch dekhe, to if a person has an asset stored outside the regulated exchanges and through DeFi wallets, so would they be uh, would they be taxable at the end of the day the tax obligation is on the individual who is an indian resident so halaki aap jo keh rahe hain defi tracking is a problem currently aur agar defi to cfi agar koi movement ho raha hai to you leave a paper trail usme you can be subject to scrutiny uh, any sensible crypto investor jo ki tax compliant rehna chahta hai Jisko harassment ki wants to avoid any kind of tax scrutiny or harassment, exactly. they should self-regulate and disclose by linking their DeFi wallets. Uh, certainly on our platform like ours, which is TaxScript, you, are, you can link all your transactions uh, and you know, be an honest crypto investor and be compliant of the rules. That, that compliance obligation falls on the crypto investor. So honest crypto investor is a need of an hour. That's what Indy sir is saying. Uh, so, are transfers made between an individual's own wallets taxable? So, say for example, if uh, if I have made a transfer to to some of the other uh, family member of mine, so are these 
uh, transfers or wallet trans uh, taxable? If I'm transferring to a wallet that is in my name, let's say I'm the individual crypto investor, I have two wallets, hai, and without converting the cryptocurrency from one type of currency or coin to another, I've merely transferred it for uh, record keeping purposes from one wallet to another, there is no tax incidence right. on that front. If I transfer it to my brother, then it's a taxable incident in the other person's hand, unless I say that I, I gave it for free and therefore it's a gift. Say for example, if I have, if we have purchased Bitcoin at, at nine, in $18,000, and Bitcoin was currently, was a few few weeks back or, or maybe say maybe few days back, it was around $22,000. And we made a transfer to my brother's account. Correct. So he will be, he will be liable to pay that tax or? In fact, the obligation is on you All because right. you have transferred value worth 22000 on a purchase of 18000 Because it has left your wallet. Uh, these are all these little nuances where Jahape Abibi Taxman is yet to provide full exactly. clarity. <laughs> the prudency is whoever's booking that transaction needs to make sure that unke books are clean uh, and therefore apply the, the laws of prudence. First of all, he will be surprised that the, he is receiving a gift from someone. And the second surprise will be he has to pay 30% taxes on that. Moving on. And my, my point is, there is no tax bachta nahi hai. Exactly. Because or relative would be taxed as a gift and you're now liable for a higher price point because then the cost basis is zero if they haven't actually uh, you know monetarily or any other way paid for it so this is this is actually a question uh, which is which is uh, very important so do miners need to pay taxes on gains they have made on trading or digital assets point number one because traditionally in our India we have seen that you know a lot of uh, I mean, it happens in stock markets that uh, there are parents who give their children a lot of shares. And we are talking about Web3 and the universe. So is this the same rule applicable for miners as well, sir? The, the tax rules that applies to any kind of income generated at a minor level is no different from mainstream taxation and crypto taxation. Fantastic. Um, Jo rules which is up to 1500 rupees a minor can generate income in the strictest sense of the word, anything more than that gets attached to the parent with the higher income. Okay. And under their pan, it's accounted for and therefore marginal tax rates apply uh, on, the, and on those. All right. Since we are talking about taxations and the way forward for our Indian viewers. So are crypto traders, investors liable to pay for advanced taxes also, sir? Absolutely. Ye aapne bahut important point raise kara hai. Um, first of September, by the 15th of September, uh, crypto investors should have paid their advance taxes. Uh, I'm not sure what the compliance level has been. Uh, we believe there's about 25 million crypto investors in this country. Um, and because it's income outside of a normal, uh, what I call salaried process where there's a predictability and there's TDS largely at the marginal tax rate. Um, Isme advanced tax rulings do apply. I'm not comfortable to answer the question as to what is the compliance uh, coverage on this? How many people have complied with advanced taxes? All right, your last closing comments on this, sir, since uh, it's our first show and uh, and there is there are a lot of, lot of other shows which we are going to bring for our viewers to understand this tax and the taxations in the in the in the Web three universe. So, what is your closing remarks on this, sir? Closing remark uh, is to say that um, to your audiences that they taxes are here to stay. Uh, do manage your tax planning. Do remember the fact that your thirty percent tax on gains. Aapko dene pad rahe hai. If you're booking losses, you know second half of the year, but you've got a lot of gains in the first half, your obligations to pay your taxes remain intact. So there are no offset of losses. So do rely on tax planning. Otherwise, tax, when you have to pay your taxes, there's pressure on you to generate liquidity. Uh, platforms such as us uh, not only allow for tax compliance and give you a proper computation, we're also helping you with your tax planning exercise to make sure you're able to meet your tax obligations. So again, rely on specialists. Um, I believe technology plays a huge role on that front. And... Uh, 
you know, focus on, I tell investors that focus on what you do well, which is investing, leave your tax compliance to other specialists who can take away that headache. So that's the word coming in from Indy Sarkar that always plan your taxes and always consult your financial advisor before making any investment bets. Thank you so much, sir, for joining on this first show, our Diwali special show on taxation. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Manoj, and wishing all your viewers a very happy Diwali and best wishes for the year ahead. Best wishes to you as well, sir. Happy Diwali. Thank you so much. Thank you.